You're listening to Sean Kelly Reviews, a presentation of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. Now here is your host, Sean Kelly. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Sean Kelly Reviews. Uh, first a little bit of housekeeping, you will probably know that the site, Sean Kelly Movies, looks a lot different now. I've just moved it to a new server and I'm still working out all the kinks and this will be actually the first podcast that I post directly onto the site using a um, liberated syndication plugin so this will be interesting how this turns out so um, I hope you are listening to this podcast fine. Um, I actually created a brand new podcast page which gives you all the subscription details that you need to know for iPhone or Android or even you can subscribe to the um, bonus Patreon podcast that I occasionally do. And um, so we'll move on to the uh, reviews. So um, I think I said at the end of the last episode of Sean Kelly Reviews that I was going to do Solo, but now Solo is like a few weeks old now, so I'm actually going to still do um, Hereditary, which I was going to be the second film I was going to do, but instead of Solo, I'm going to, I'm going to review um, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is the uh, Mr. Rogers documentary, which opens this week, so uh, that will be my second review, so the main review will be Hereditary, and it's coming up right now. Come on, Peter. There's your suit. It's heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. I know my mom would be very touched and probably a little suspicious. My mother was a very secretive and private woman. It's Grandma. You know you were her favorite, right? Even when you were a little baby, she wouldn't let me feed you because she needed to feed you. She was a very difficult woman, which maybe explains me. I recognize you from your mother. What? Sometimes I swear I can feel them in the room. Oh my God! What was that? She isn't gone. She had private rituals, private friends. Who's going to take care of me? You don't think I'm going to take care of you? But when you die. And she wasn't altogether there. <laughs> At the end. any more stress on my family. A family dealing with grief unravels shocking secrets about their history in Hereditary. Annie Graham, played by Tony Collette, is an artist living with her husband, Ben Steve, played by Gabriel Byrne, and children Peter, played by Alex Wolfe, and Charlie, played by Millie Shapiro. Following the death of her estranged mother, Annie becomes overwhelmed by grief, which is worsened by firm of her family tragedy. After befriending a woman named Joan, played by Anne Dowd, Annie is encouraged to perform a seance to conta- contact her lost loved ones. However, in doing so, Annie unlocks a secret that has been hiding within her family. So, uh, Hereditary is the debut feature film from writer-director Ari Aster, and it combines a story about a family dealing with grief with, with some uh, supernatural horror elements. Uh, Hereditary is a film that is best 
scene knowing uh, very little about the plot, uh, especially since the film has like a very shocking incident uh, in the first act of the film that truly got under my skin. For at least that one moment, Hereditary is the type of horror film that is less about jump scares and more about making you feel uncomfortable in your seat. Uh, Of course, Hereditary has plenty of jump scares as well, uh, which are uh, assisted by an excellent sound mix that um, really requires this film to be seen theatrically to get the uh, best experience. So uh, while uh, Hereditary is a very well-done horror film, it is ultimately not really anything that I haven't seen before, and that's probably because I see a lot of horror films, and um, I eventually started figuring out where the uh, film was going to end up. And it can be very easy to um, pick out Ari Aster's influences for the film with uh, Hereditary referencing everything from The Omen to The Exorcist to uh, Rosemary's Baby. It was actually apparently um, Aster's intention to have um, Hereditary be a film that feels evil, and indeed this is a very mean-spirited film at times, including some elements that might be a bit taboo for other films. Strangely, the uh, film that um, comes most to mind for me in comparison to Hereditary is um, 2015's The Witch, uh, since they are um, not only both horror films distributed by um, A24, but they are uh, well-made horror films that could have easily been more. Um, In the case of Hereditary, I thought that the film was more effective before all the supernatural elements came front and center. Um, Since this film is structured to suggest that Annie could have easily be having a mental breakdown, I think Hereditary might have been more effective if it kept things a bit more ambiguous. However, I'm still going to say that Hereditary is an extremely well-done horror film that did accomplish the rare feat of getting under my skin, even if only for a brief moment, and I give it four stars. So, coming up next is my review for Won't You Be My Neighbor? Here is the trailer. A television program for children made its unauspicious debut on station WQED in Pittsburgh. Its host, Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yeah. I want to tell you something. What would you like to tell I like you. I like you, my dear. Thank you very much for telling me that. You take all of the elements that make good television and do the exact opposite. You have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star. Yet, it worked. Hello. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. He was always trying to get a message across in every show. A week on death. What does assassination mean? A divorce. Some people get married, and after a while, they're so unhappy that they don't want to be married anymore. He was radical. I know everyone says that, but he was radical. They didn't want black people to come and swim in their swimming pools. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. A neighborhood was a place where, at times, that you felt worried, scared, unsafe, would take care of you. He had a singular vision of kindness and love. Love is at the root of everything. All learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. Children have very deep feelings, just the way everybody does. There must be times when you do feel blue. I'm not feeling blue right now, though. Me neither. Won't you be my neighbor? Well, I suppose it's an invitation. It's an invitation for somebody to be close to you. The greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor. 
The story of the life and career of Mr. Rogers is told in Won't You Be My Neighbor. In the 1960s, Fred Rogers started the t- children's television series Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as a way to connect children to the issues of the day using his singing, storytelling, and puppetry. The show ran for over 30 years with the soft-spoken, cardigan-wearing children's television host being a symbol to multiple generations of children. So, Academy Award winning filmmaker Morgan Neville, uh, who directed 20 Feet from Stardom, brings us all back to our childhood with Won't You Be My Neighbor. Fred Rogers can arguably be considered the greatest children's entertainer there ever was. As an ordained minister, Rogers used his television series to talk to children in a very benevolent fashion about the issues of the day, with his ultimate message being that everyone is special and that you have to love your neighbor and love yourself. So, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood ran from 1968 to um, 2001, and it was a staple for at least uh, three generations of children. This includes myself, uh, and I definitely remember watching uh, Mr. Rogers when I was when I was a child in the 1980s, and um, it was uh, Mr. Rogers who's in the U.S. and then there's uh, Mr. Dressup, which is like a Canadian version, and so I, I, I watch both shows because um, we get PBS in Canada. So, and um, well, uh, Fred Rogers was a man who um, never spoke down to children and always talked about acceptance. Uh, while this has attracted some criticism from those who couldn't believe this man was truly this nice, uh, Rogers has left a legacy that will probably never be matched. Um, I would definitely say that if you grew up watching Mr. Rogers, uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor is a film that will regress you uh, back to your uh, childhood memories and it, this is a documentary that is hard to watch and keep your eyes dry and that is why I have given Won't You Be My Neighbor five stars because it's an excellent documentary about just one of the best children's entertainers there ever was and there probably being no one like Mr. Rogers ever again so uh, in these hard times, just go out and watch Won't You Be My Neighbor, because it's great. So, that's it for uh, this episode of uh, Sean Kelly Reviews. I am not sure what I'm going to review next time, but I will probably see you in a couple weeks. See ya! Sean Kelly Reviews is a production of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. The music is Out of the Fog from the website podsummit.com. You can support Sean Kelly by going to patreon.com slash skonmovies. You can read Sean Kelly's writing at www.skonmovies.com.